Acute upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage is defined as bleeding proximal to the ligament of trites. This is a prevalent and clinically important condition that can lead to negative outcomes such as re-bleeding and death. Early endoscopy, performed within 24 hours after presentation of the patient, is the standard of care in patients with acute upper gastrointestinal bleeding. The goals of early endoscopy are to determine the cause of bleeding, to assess the risk of further bleeding according to the appearance of the bleeding lesion, and if indicated, to administer endoscopic therapy. The peptic ulcer, in this example, has eroded through the mucosa and submucosa into an underlying artery that produces the bleeding. The ulcer base is covered by a fibrin exudate. The non-bleeding visible vessel, composed of the artery and clot plugging the defect in the side wall of the artery, appears as a nipple-like protuberance in the ulcer base. Endoscopic hemostasis treatments include injection, thermal, and mechanical therapies, or a combination of these techniques. In injection therapy, a 25-gauge injector sclerotherapy needle is passed through the working channel of a large, single-channel, or double-channel therapeutic endoscope. Injection mediums consist of saline, vasoconstrictors, sclerosing agents, tissue adhesives, or a combination of these. Injections are typically made into the four quadrants surrounding the bleeding site. Injection directly into the underlying vessel is not recommended. Submucosal injections of 0.5 to 2 milliliter aliquots are recommended, and multiple injections per quadrant are usually performed. The technique of submucosal injection provides a volume tamponade effect plus possible local vasoconstriction and platelet plug facilitation. The endoscopist should observe the raising and subsequent blanching of the targeted and surrounding mucosa. Injection of diluted epinephrine or saline alone as monotherapy is inadequate and should be avoided. Instead, injection of epinephrine plus saline in a 1 to 10,000 dilution followed by injection of another agent or combined with contact thermal therapy is preferred. Thermal therapies use either contact methods such as multipolar electrocoagulation or a heater probe or non-contact methods such as argon plasma coagulation. This animation demonstrates the use of a contact thermal probe, a large 10 French probe is recommended, that has been placed into the working channel of a large single channel or double channel therapeutic endoscope. The target site may appear as an active bleeding vessel that is spurting or oozing or as a non-bleeding visible vessel. The probe should be placed directly over the target site and pressure applied to cause indentation of the targeted tissue with compression of the underlying vessel while delivering thermal energy. This action is referred to as coaptive coagulation and its aim is to weld the artery shut. Treatment should continue until the active bleeding has stopped or the protuberance of the non-bleeding visible vessel has been completely flattened. The endoscopist should observe a post-hemostasis depression, or footprint, on completion of the contact thermal therapy, confirming the approximation and fusion of the superficial tissue layers and the deeper tissue layers. This area then should be irrigated with water through the contact thermal probe and observed for any possible post-treatment bleeding. Mechanical ligation usually involves the application of endoscopic clips. A number of different endoscopic clipping devices are now commercially available. The following animation demonstrates a clipping device for mechanical closure of the underlying vessel. As with injection catheters and thermal probes, clipping devices can be loaded into the working channel of the endoscope. At the site of bleeding, a clip is placed directly onto the visible vessel, with caution taken not to amputate the nipple-like projection. Multiple clips can be successfully placed to achieve optimal hemostasis. Care must be taken not to dislodge previously applied clips. As a rule, when optimally placed, the clips should remain in situ for at least 7 to 10 days before sloughing off. 
all methods of endoscopic hemostasis have been shown to be effective, so it is recommended that endoscopists use the hemostasis technique that they are most comfortable performing and that is best fit to the appearance and location of the lesion. Emerging endoscopic technologies, such as Doppler ultrasonographic probes for guiding the application of hemostasis therapy and evaluating its success, as well as improved endoscopic suturing devices, may play important roles in future clinical management.